So, uh, how do you analyze the race between you and your opponent, Colin Walker? Uh, listen, this campaign's a real fight. Uh, Chuck Schumer has been explicit that I'm his number one target in the country. The Democrats are spending over $100 million trying to flip Texas blue. This Senate race presents a clear contrast. I think every campaign should be about a candidate's record. And my record and Congressman Colin Allred's record could not be more different. His record is extreme liberal. His first four years in the House of Representatives, he voted 100 percent with Nancy Pelosi. Congressman Allred voted in favor of open borders over and over and over again. He voted against law enforcement over and over and over again. He voted for releasing violent criminals over and over and over again. He's voted for higher taxes, including higher taxes on oil and gas. And he's voted against oil and gas and against Texas jobs over and over and over again. That's an extreme record. You contrast it with mine. I've spent 12 years fighting for 30 million Texans, fighting for jobs. My number one priority is jobs, jobs, jobs. Fighting for more jobs, lower taxes, reasonable regulations so small businesses can grow and pro prosper. And then fighting for freedom, for your constitutional rights, free speech, religious liberty, the Second Amendment, and fighting for your security, the right to, to keep your family safe. Look, you look at these extreme Democrats like Kamala Harris and, and Colin Allred, they undermine the police and they put in place chaos and an open border. That is endangering your children and your family. We need to secure the border and we need to support the men and women in blue. Talking about the border, yeah. uh, you spent a large amount of your speech, you know, that's a big issue yeah. going on this election cycle. You know, what are you looking to do if elected for another term? We will secure the border. And I, and I can say that with confidence because we've done it already. When Donald Trump was president, I, I worked hand in hand with him to secure the border and we achieved the lowest rate of illegal immigration in 45 years. We know how to do it. We did it. When Joe Biden and Kamala Harris came into office, they inherited the lowest rate of illegal immigration in 45 years. All they had to do was not screw it up. But understand, Kamala Harris was the border czar. She was in charge of the border. They deliberately broke the border. They allowed 11 and a half million illegal immigrants into this country. And now every single day, Americans are dying, children are being assaulted, women are being raped by illegal immigrants who Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and Colin Allred let go. You take a look at Jocelyn Nungary, the, the, the beautiful 12-year-old girl in Houston. She was kidnapped and raped and murdered by two illegal immigrants that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and Colin Allred let go. They were in custody, they came from Venezuela, all that Democrats had to do was follow the law, put them on a plane, and send them home, and Jocelyn would still be alive. But instead, they decided to let them go, and the two of them came to Houston, and they kidnapped and murdered that precious angel. This is wrong, and it needs to stop. You faced a tough race last time yeah. you went against Beto O'Rourke. You only won by less than three points. Yeah. So um, you've, I've seen polls where you're up double digits. Yeah. I've seen some where you're in a statistical tie. Yeah. You know, uh, you mentioned, uh, I think it was on Fox News, that... Uh, uh, Mitch McConnell wasn't giving you enough money. Has things changed and uh, is your relationship still good with him? Oh, listen, when you stand up and fight and when you take on the Washington swamp, the swamp doesn't like it. And so I've been proud to fight, number one, against Democrats who have terrible ideas. So I've led the fight against whether it's Barack Obama or Chuck Schumer or Joe Biden or Kamala Harris when they're pushing for things that hurt Texans, things like open borders, things like defunding the police, things like taking away our free speech and our religious liberty. I've been proud to lead the fight against that. I've also led the fight against career politicians in my own party, the corruption of Washington. My job is to fight for the working men and women of Texas. And I gotta say, it's one of the reasons I love Jefferson County. I love Southeast Texas, because the people here are hardworking people with common sense values. And it's my job to fight every day for them, for their jobs, for their values. And there is a reason that Chuck Schumer and George Soros are going to spend over a hundred million dollars trying to beat me. Because I am leading the fight to stop the damage they're doing to this country. And so listen, if you're a really partisan, angry Democrat, after Donald Trump, there's nobody in the country you wanna beat more than me. But my job is not to worry about the angry partisans in Washington. My job is to worry about 30 million Texans. And every day I am fighting for jobs, for freedom, and for security for Texans across our state. Has McConnell given you that extra money, though, yet? I, he, he's given me zero. 
Still zero. Zero. That look, the swamp doesn't like people who stand up and fight them. And that, that was true at 18. It's true now. I'm supported by Texans. I'm supported by people who just go to tedcruz.org and make a contribution online, 25, 50, 100 bucks. You saw here in Beaumont, people just, just pulling out a check and giving 100 bucks to say, look, let's defend Texas. That has always been the base of my support. And, and you know what? I wouldn't have it any other way. unquestionably and I think we're going to see a very high voter turnout I think everybody's going to show up and vote and and listen the contrast between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris is massive you know almost every election comes down to one question are you better off than you were four years ago and unless you happen to be a big tech billionaire or a Mexican drug lord uh, and if you're either of those you're much better off than you were four years ago. And frankly, if you're a Mexican drug lord, you should vote for Kamala Harris because she's made you billions of dollars. But if you're not, if you're a regular Texan on almost every level from inflation to crime to the border to two wars waging across the earth, the record of border czar Kamala Harris has been a train wreck. And the country and Texas was doing much better when Donald Trump was in the White House. I'll also note that Kamala Harris and Colin Allred are running the exact same campaign. You know, it's been a month now since Kamala became the presumptive Democrat nominee. And that month, she doesn't do press interviews. She doesn't do press conferences. What I'm doing right now, answering the questions you're asking me, Kamala Harris doesn't do. She stands up and reads from a teleprompter like she did at the Democrat convention, and then she runs away and she's done. Colin Allred is doing the exact same thing. He doesn't do media interviews. He doesn't do press conferences. It has been 60 days since Colin Allred did a press conference where he actually answered one question from a reporter, 60 days. In that same 60 days, I've done 12 press conferences. I've done, I, I'll, I'll do three today. There's a reason Kamala Harris and Colin Allred will not answer questions and it's because their record is terrible. It's because they're hiding from their record. If they do a press conference, they might get a hard question. I'll give you an example. You want to understand how radical and extreme Colin Allred is, take, take a look at his record on the border. Repeatedly, he votes for open borders. If you think border security is important, Colin Allred says you're a racist. He calls the border wall, he calls it that racist border wall, and he is pledged to personally tear down, quote, that racist border wall. That's an extreme view. You know, there was a vote in, in the House of Representatives on whether an illegal alien who violently assaults a police officer should be deported. Now I'll tell you, if you get any group of say 50 or 100 Texans in any city in Texas together, you get 100 people in Beaumont, you sit them down, doesn't matter what party, you can give me 100 Democrats, and you ask them, hey, if an illegal alien beats up a cop, should he be deported? And almost everybody is gonna say, yeah, obviously. Colin Allred voted no. That's extreme, that's not where the people of Texas are. You know, you said that question, all the, the you said that uh, uh, you're a constitutional guy. You yeah. brought that up again, yeah. again during the, your conference here. Uh, Trump has said previously that uh, people that burn the American flag should face a year in jail. Uh, do you share that view, and do you believe that Texas v. Johnson is settled law? Listen, I'm a big believer in, in free speech. The Supreme Court has made clear Texas versus Johnson is the law of the land. But I'll tell you, when it comes to hostility to free speech, it's not even close between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. With Kamala Harris, we have seen the federal government engaging in censorship. We've seen Kamala Harris and Colin Allred get in bed with big tech and try to silence you, try to silence your voices. I have always defended free speech. And by the way, free speech for people who agree with me or people who disagree with me. You have a right to speak and say what you want and there is a reason it's protected in the very First Amendment to the Bill of Rights, and I've spent my entire adult life fighting to defend the Bill of Rights in the Constitution, fighting to defend the constitutional rights of Texans. All right, we got a roll. Thank Thanks, you guys. guys. Right, thank you.